The second reason the Trinity makes a really big practical difference in our lives is that the Trinity defines, kind of outlines, sets up our prayer life. In fact, our prayers don't even make sense apart from a Trinitarian understanding of God. For instance, think about this, the Lord's Prayer. Jesus teaches his disciples to pray, Our Father who art in heaven. But how does God become your Father? How do you become a child of your Father? It isn't simply because you were born. Everybody who's born is automatically a child of the Father. No. No, there's a second birth that Jesus talks about that makes you a child of the Heavenly Father. And in that birth, God the Father claims you. But how does he do that? He claims you through the Son by the power of the Spirit. In other words, Jesus dies to redeem us. And that becomes personal for us by the power of the Spirit. Our relationship with the Father, our adoption into the Father's household happens by the Son in the power of the Spirit. It's a Trinitarian understanding of what it means to be saved and redeemed. That's why we call God our Father. Because Jesus has become our brother, and now our Father in heaven has called us his children. It's a Trinitarian understanding. So whenever we pray, think about this formula of our prayer life and how often we pray like this. We pray to the Father in the name of the Son through the power of the Spirit. That Trinitarian outline is what forms our prayer life. And that's why Christians end their prayers so often with in Jesus' name. Because we are speaking to the Father through the one mediator. The only way to get to the Father is through the Son, Jesus Christ. And so I can call God Father and I can talk to him because of what Jesus has done for me and because the Spirit now speaks for me to the Father.